Today we're going to teach you how to optimize website performance with the Google Search Console bubble chart. This is new, this is cool, let's take a look at it. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so that you can get more videos like this in the future. So analyzing search performance data is always challenging, but recently Google came out with a really cool new way to do that and we're going to explore that in this video. Today we're going to be exploring a new bubble chart from Google. This bubble chart is a really cool visualization that's going to show you how your website's keywords are performing. It's also going to give you some great insight into which ones you should be focusing on improving. Also some really good news, you don't need to build this chart all by yourself, there's a template you can use after you have connected Google Search Console to Data Studio. I'll explain more. First things first, let's go ahead and pull this chart up on the screen so that you can get a look at it. As you can see, the bubble chart is a really cool visualization when you have multiple metrics and dimensions because it enables you to see the relationship and patterns of your data more effectively. Pro tip, I've actually used bubble charts like this a lot. In particular, I used it for page speed as well to see the elements of a site that made it slow and the elements that made it fast based off of a bubble visualization perspective. We're doing the same thing now, but we're doing it with keywords. So this example shown here allows you to see traffic attributes such as click-through rate and average position, also volume, total clicks for the different dimensions, queries, devices, and you can see all this at the same time. Full disclosure, all this data that I'm talking about today comes directly from Google. I'm not making it up. So by creating this type of chart with Google Data Studio connected to Search Console, you're going to be able to do the following things. You're going to be able to filter and control data such as the date range, the query, the country, and the device. You're going to have accesses, so you can reverse the y-axis direction. You can do a logarithmic scale, which is a way of displaying numeric data over a wide range of values in a compact way. You're going to be able to have reference lines, which are going to help you to highlight values that are above or below a certain threshold, looking at the average, medium, or certain percentile. And you're also going to have these bubbles that have different sizes and different colors and those sizes are going to be based on the number of clicks and the bubble sizes and the colors are going to use the device category as a bubble color to help you to understand the differences between things such as mobile and desktop. So when you're analyzing this data, you're going to be looking at the x-axis, you're going to be looking at the y-axis, you're going to be looking at the size, and you're going to be looking at the colors. And that's going to allow you to get a better idea of the differences in this data and what you can take away from it. Let's dive into that a little bit more. So for the top positions with a high click-through rate, you probably don't need to do much for those, right? You're doing a great job already. But for the low positions, with a high click-through rate, those queries seem relevant to users and they get a high click-through rate even when ranking lower than the average query on your website. This could represent a significant contribution if you can get those to rank higher in Google. You should be focusing on those, right? Now, if you have a low position and a low click-through rate, these might not really feel like something you should put your effort into. But these can really be divided into two main groups. So related queries, if the query in question is important to you, it's good to start to have it appear in search already prioritizing these queries over queries that are not appearing in search results at all as they might be easier to optimize. Now there also might be unrelated queries. If these are unrelated queries, you don't want to spend any time on them. Maybe you even want to take them away from your site entirely so that they're not associating your website with queries you don't care about. Now top positions and low click-through rates, those queries might have a low click-through rate for a reason. Google recommends that you check if your competitors have structured markup and you don't. You check that you may have optimized or be accidentally ranking for a query that users are not interested in. And then you also check to see that users may have already found the information they needed. For example, all the information is already in the SERPs. I would also add to that if you've got a low click-through rate, it's a really good idea to work on your title and description. Try to figure out what's getting a better click-through rate in something like Google AdWords and or within the SERP so that you can apply that to your site. Think numbers, think passionate words, think customer pain points, think calls to action. Some of the final takeaways I'll leave you with today for this video, ensure that your title elements and descriptions and alt attributes are all descriptive and accurate. You wanna use heading elements to emphasize important text. You wanna add structured data markup and you wanna think about words that a user might search for to find a piece of content. You can always use the Google Keyword Planner to make that happen. I hope you enjoyed this video on optimization your website performance with the Google Search Console Data Studio bubble chart. Pretty cool thing. Go ahead and set it up. If you do, let me know. I'd love to hear about it. I'll see you next time. Bye.